Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Burke. I'm a board-certified OBGYN physician, and I want to talk about the management of abnormal vaginal bleeding. And what's inspired me to do this is the untimely death of Jessica Petway. So, if you are a woman of reproductive age, meaning you're still getting your period every month, and you have excessive bleeding, something doesn't feel right, you go to your healthcare provider or you go to the emergency department, here are the things that should happen. Number one, they should do a pregnancy test, either blood or urine, to make sure that you are not pregnant because if you are, that abnormal bleeding could be uh, representative of you having a miscarriage or an ectopic pregnancy, meaning a pregnancy in the tube. And that's a very dangerous type of pregnancy because if the pregnancy gets too big in the tube, the tube will rupture and you could have catastrophic bleeding. So that is the first thing that needs to be done, a pregnancy test. Second thing that needs to be done is they need to take your history to determine when did the bleeding start, how much are you bleeding, how many pads you're going through, or tampons. Then, having established the quantity and, and the time, you know, the, the length of the bleeding, Quite often, a CBC should be done, a hemoglobin or a hematocrit, to see how much blood you've lost. If you've lost a significant amount of blood, then you would require a blood transfusion, and I believe that happened on several occasions with Jessica Petway. Now, the next step is really, really important. Please remember this because I believe this step was missed in her management. Um, the next step should be a pelvic examination where someone inspects your uterus, your cervix and your uterus based on uh, a, a pelvic exam. The reason we need to do a pelvic exam is because we need to see what's going on in the vagina. I mean, let's just be real. The blood is coming from the vagina. I think people skipped a step they jump straight to imaging, you know, so-called new school. But the standard of care is to do a pelvic and speculum examination. Why? Because number one, if you have advanced cervical cancer, then you're going to see abnormalities on the cervix. The cervix is the mouth that precedes the body of the uterus. So you will see, if it's late stage, you will see abnormalities, even if it isn't late stage. If you don't see any abnormalities, and listen, this is, this is really the key. They need to take a biopsy of the inner lining of the uterus and the cervix. Why? Because we're looking for cancer. Vaginal bleeding could be significant, uh, a significant representation of cancer. And take doing an ultrasound or an MRI is not going to give you that kind of information. So I, you know, I, I think everyone in my profession is devastated because cervical cancer is one of the most preventable cancers with the right type of screening. And, you know, people will go back and forth about the pap smear you know, and the fibroids. I'm not going to get into that. I just want you to know that in conclusion, if you have abnormal vaginal, ble abnormal vaginal bleeding, a sample of the inner lining of the uterus should be obtained. Sometimes they even do hysteroscopy where they put a, a, a tube inside of the wall of the, the uterus to see what's going on. But a sample should be done. And if you have abnormal bleeding and no one is doing that, please get a second opinion and even possibly a third. Because when you're proactive about your health care, okay, the life that you save could very well be your own or someone that you love. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe so I can continue to let this knowledge flow to you. Take care. I'll see you next time. Don't play with it, don't be the size